That is cool. Would it?
feedback deal. So what they wanted me to do is kind of break the ice, which I did. And we're going to start uh, at this area, right here. The leader of the whole outfit is going to stand, stand up and tell us who you are and what grade you're in. I am DC Cook and I'm in fourth grade. Fourth grade. Now, what I have done here for you, young lady, I've gathered the finest fourth graders in America. <laughs> <laughs> Every one spent at least three years in the fourth grade. <laughs> Any question you may have could be taken care of in this room. Okay, you understand? This is why you want to go and get a high school education. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's we'll take a look at this young man right here. And I'm sure uh, everybody uh, will be happy to be. This is the guy behind it all right here. I think Jeffrey Cook? Okay. experiment with monster trucks for a short time and uh and still a big fan of it and glad to be here i'm jr mcneil owner raising cane um zane <coughs> two uh lancaster pennsylvania like i'm jim old anchor i used to run a truck called mulling thunder bill tristan from mulling illinois uh, titan four x four eric howell from st joe indiana uh high horse monster truck mike. Uh, mike welch billingham washington started in Late 83, his first show in 84, Monster Max Super Pete, several others. Uh, Rod Litzel, driver of USA 1, been with Everett since 1980. Thanks for everything. Well, I'm Jim Craig, and this is my no loss to words wife, almost as bad as my boss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm John Nowacki from New Carlisle, Indiana. I'm the owner, builder, and driver of the Blood Monster Trucks. Uh, I'm Rick Roman, and I'm Mad Van Motorsports with my boys here. <laughs> Why didn't you bring your truck out and start? Campaign like at first. At first? Yeah. Actually, I'll tell you what, I had a pretty good job with Bob Marino. Yeah. Talked to my father and said, What should I do? Uh, they, they want this truck. You know, it's all me. Hey. Yeah. These trucks, you know, people like to sell. Exactly. Well, you know, you're making good money. You got to pay for this truck. Well, back then you weren't being paid, right? Yeah. I mean, and that's kind of, I kind of stayed with Bob Marino construction and just didn't. The, uh, and it was hard to do it and work. Right. And really, I was young back then. I, I could have. I was 19 years old, right? I mean, I could have uh, when I started first building the truck. But, uh, that's that's kind of what happened. Yeah, you and I used to go out and, and oh, we'd man. go four wheel, and Jim would be out there. And, and if, if both of us come back to the shop and nothing broke, we'd hook up to tug of war and see what, what the next week went was on our trucks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had some fun. I really had some fun. I had more fun then. Than with the truck now, I really did. We four wheeling and, and uh, knocking down trees. Remember me knocking down I trees? I remember you driving right over top of them. I knocked them down. Let me tell you about this guy. How far back I remember, and he he one got me started. Really? I got the drag strip. I was on my ex drive racer, named Fred Schaefer Gold. And he St. Louis International Raceway. This guy's going over Poplar Street Bridge in his monster truck. And he turned it over. Seconds. He was at the drag show, I had a whole highway shut down. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't probably no. Too many people didn't know that. Did you, do you remember that? When he yep. put his truck on yep. Papa Street Bridge and got it on the street? Yeah. That's, he that's had 48 the second time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Still quite a piece. Another thing about these trucks, yeah, like monster trucks back then, if you want to call them, the bumper heights today are like 30 inches on my pickup. And mine's like 30, or 29. 
back then, I think it hit me right here. How about it, Bob? The head lash was up here on top of my head. Yeah. You couldn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Nine foot wide. I mean, we go over. I got a video of you from way back when, and you've got the uh, big tires in the back, a little up front. Do you recall? Do you recall that? Yes. Yeah, 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 no. Yeah. Well. <laughs> How many, how many times did you do that? I was curious. I've only well, seen it uh, one time. The two, the two major times, one was in Kansas City, Arrowhead Stadium, mm -hmm. and the other time was the Silver Dome, Pontiac Silver Dome. And um, really both times was just to do something different of pulling the sled. It was the main thing, you know. It, it would do a nice wheel stand, and it was pretty easy and was different. That's one of the things that, that stick out in my mind with horse. When I think of horse, you know, I think of it either up on a bus or, or pulling that sled. You know, it's, it's always doing something a little different outside the box. You know, we we talk about goofy things that we did that wasn't safe and and different things. And um, I have to say, in Texas Stadium, whenever I done that first bus crush, yeah, I had no helmet. Just had my Taurus hat on, <laughs> hanging out the door, probably no seat belt, and, uh, but that was just, was not good examples, but it was just the thing at the time. You said, said, I would almost rather be at home if my dad beat me than oh. I this truck. <laughs> well, they're just so abusive, uh, they were. the Super Pete with no front suspension, and that was the Rolling <laughs> Vengeance truck converted. And, and I just, I like the looks of the Peterbilts and the trucks, and, and to get any travel with the fender, you just couldn't, couldn't make it look right. And I just wanted it looking good, and I told Bob, I said, you know, I'd rather get beat with a 2x4 with a from my dad than have to get back in the Super P and, and jump and drive. And it, you would get bruises all over your body. Uh, I still don't understand how I'd get bruises and slurred speech from just bouncing in a truck, but I would be black and blue <laughs> from bouncing so hard. And how did it come about that you uh, put your steering on your truck? How, how did that come about? We were doing a, the uh, gravel rama show in uh, Cleves, Ohio, and an engineer came came to the show, and he and I sat on our big foot for at least an hour, probably two hours, and he was telling me all about the rock where they built the rock wheel axles where he was from. And he says, you know, they make them. They make them this way. The front and rear axle, they're all interchangeable. You know, and you can reverse the hubs where you have duels or singles on them for the military. That way, the military they got several trucks out, and one breaks a rear axle, they can fit a front one in the back, and, and vice versa. And all the way home from there, I kept thinking, well, if it's that easy to do, <laughs> it was Monday afternoon. I had rear steering on my truck after I got back from there. I uh, I hired Bob to bring Bigfoot one up north to Minnesota to my re grand opening in my four-wheel drive shop off-road specialty. I had moved to a new location and re grand opening had him bring the truck up for the place. And we were still street driving the truck at the time we drove them about 10, 15 miles to my home. I think we drove them to a fairgrounds too and did a little display at a, at a county fair or at a truck and tractor pull or something. But uh, along the way, Bob was uh, playing around a little bit and when we got home to my place, we had to jack it up and replace an axle in my driveway. This is this is early history here, and uh, to this day, the the outer stub of that axle is still on my desk, along with other samples of axles as we progress through the years. I've got one of each of the different sizes and designs of special engineered axles. That early stub off of the big foot one truck is still on my desk in my office, and a lot of people ask what it is. It's, uh, uh, it's pretty, pretty neat. So here we go with the very first inductee, ladies and gentlemen, into the very first International Monster Truck Hall of Fame. Based out of St. Louis, Missouri, with a truck that goes by the name of Bigfoot, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Bob Chandler. Bob I have several people that I need to personally thank, you know, that were involved in the early parts of the Bigfoot and this industry. And first and more important is my wife, Marilyn, there. Next person, most important, is Jim Kramer. Jim Kramer was with us from the beginning. He, uh, he helped build Bigfoot One, and he helped build every, every Bigfoot thereafter. I think we're on number 18 or 19 right now. Um, um, next on my list here. There's two other people that I knew of that were involved in this truck craze early on. One is Dan DeGrasso with The Beast, and the other is Jeff Danes with King Kong. In the early days, 
Dan and I would go out four wheeling. In fact, Jim four wheeling with us. And when Dan and I'd come back, and neither one of us were broke, we'd, we'd pull up to the shop and hook up with the chain to find our next week link, didn't we? And Jeff Danes was involved probably at the same time Dan and I were. Uh, there's one person that I think we all have to thank in this industry. The guy's name is the late Bob George. Bob George was a, a event announcer and co-owner of SRO, which is now Feld Entertainment, Feld Motorsports, I guess. Everett Jasper's USA One, uh, Fred and Jack's truck was barefooted first, and later Jack built Taurus. Um, I really think that the, the people I mentioned above, the trucks that I mentioned above, had a huge role in the creation and evolution of the truck industry, and I think we all owe all a debt of gratitude. Thank you very much. First of all, where did the name Bigfoot come from? Um, I used to go out four-wheeling every weekend with a truck, do something with it, and I'd come back with it broke every Monday morning, and my general manager, Ron Magruder, started calling me Bigfoot because of that big size 14. Okay. I couldn't keep it out of the throttle. No. There's stories out there that we all share. You, you, you got involved in the international side of this thing. You were one of the leaders there. How did that come about? Well, in most of our situations, people called us. Uh, we, were, we were lucky. We were out there first. We made the right contacts and got a lot of publicity. And uh, the international calls came to us. And we've been in, I think, 15 different countries right now, which still just amazes the heck out of me. But uh, uh, I want to tell you that you were talking about the kids, you know, you know being a part of the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I did an event one year, and, you know, normally it happened, you, you lose, you win. Well, I lost the race, and I, you're signing autographs at the end of the show, and here's this little kid up there at the line. He wants you to sign his autograph, and he's crying. I says, what are you crying for? He says, Bigfoot lost. <laughs> <laughs> that was the neatest That thing. was Jim Kramer, uh, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> You knew he's going to have to go back. Trucks, is no. there? Can you see any end of this stuff, or is it just new challenges keep coming up? No, I don't. I don't really see an end anymore. I think this is going to continue. I think we got so many people involved here, and, and it's part of the industry. They, I've seen monster trucks. You see them at at stores where there's toys all over the place. There's cartoons. I've heard it mentioned in some of the the. Uh, um, political things where the monster truck had mentioned mm -hmm. we're, we're a part of the establishment now and I think it's going to stay. Well, like I was telling the guys at the meeting today, and we're going to wrap this up, is the fact that when he would, people would say, well, I'm just a spectator or I'm just a fan, and I really believe this in all my heart. No, you're part of the family. You're not just anything. You are a spectator. You are a fan. You are a monster truck owner and driver. We're all got our piece to carry in this thing. And this is the guy that was uh, right out there on the front when this thing got going. Bob Channer, I want to congratulate you. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Channer of the St. Louis Preserve. Thank you, sir. Speaking of somebody that's here, this guy came a long way. He comes out of the Lone Star State of Texas. They ask him where he gets all his equipment and everything, and all them deuce and a half and them big tires and stuff like that wind up at surplus stores down there, and then they wind up on a monster truck that goes by the name of Awesome Kong. How about it, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jeff Dane, right here. Jeff, come on up. We got I want to thank everybody. Come on, Army. I want to thank everybody for showing up here. Uh, it's really a great honor for me to be here, my wife to say, and uh, I'm not as long-winded as Bob, so I'm going to make this kind of short. I wanted to thank my brother, my crew I had, we got to see the country, we had a real good time, we enjoyed everything we've done. We did it for all the people and we, we did all the events and I raised my children on the road. My, my wife gave me the uh, okay that this is what we're going to do, this is how things were going to be and she stuck with me through thin and thin and uh, that's my wife right there to say, to say stand up. I also want to thank a, a, a lot of the monster truck guys that were with us on the road. We were one big family, everybody broke down, somebody helped somebody, parts, pieces, tires. We're, we're a good bunch, we're a good, good group of people, uh, we're good hard workers and uh, we really enjoyed what we did and I just want to thank you and I had a lot of fun in the, in the years I've done it and thanks a lot. All right, Jim, at this time I'd like for you to, let me, let me hold your mic for you. 
And uh, ladies and gentlemen, the second entry to the first class of the Monster Truck Hall of Fame, Mr. Jeff Dane out of the Lone Star State of Texas. You've always been involved, but I understand, in the 4x4 industry. You run a very successful business out in Texas, is that correct? What's in the 4x4? Yeah, it was Big Wheel Off Road Center. Okay, you weren't racing a truck and fixing a truck. You were running your business and what have you. How did you get your time squared away on that? You know, we had, we had to have a lot of people who would work together to make this thing go. You know, it was... It, it, the trucks were very popular. I mean, you could work every day of the week. You could do a display, you could do a car crush. I, I, there were so many things you could do, but there was only so much time in a day. Mm -hmm. So in order, the logistics of setting up the racing, the, the repairs, uh, the pa paperwork, it was just astronomical. If you didn't have a good group of people to work with, you couldn't have done it. If you had a story to tell somebody about the sport in mixed crowd with young kids, no, so I'll paraphrase that. Uh, is there anything you'd like to tell the folks out there about something that happened sometime that just kind of sticks in your head that was kind of neat? A father called me, and he said his son was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, his father had built him a go-kart that looked like King Kong, mm -hmm. and he was doing a parade. Him and his brother were in the little go-kart, and uh, he said it would mean so much to him if you showed up with that. We were going from Ohio to South Dakota, and uh, he was in Iowa. And uh, I said, you know what? Let's just surprise him and I'll show up with the truck. And he was going in the parade route and I came from behind a building and got behind him. And it was just the coolest thing I've ever seen. The kid had tears in his eyes. We all cried about it. It was just wonderful. But it, that was something that just sticks in my mind. Anything else you want to talk about? I just want to say when, when we were at a show and uh, I can remember TNT circuit and uh, we'd all be lined up in the you know, John Moore, the Breen brothers, all that would be there. And uh, we'd see Bob Chandler's truck pull in, and we'd say, oh, no, mm -hmm. here comes Bob Chandler. And Bob would come up with some new designs, new suspensions, and that pushed the sport forward. That made people like me and everybody else change and make the sport better. Ladies and gentlemen, the second inductee to the International Monster Truck Hall of Fame out of the great state of Texas. This is your thing. Congratulations, brother. You know, ladies and gentlemen, the next guy is going to be coming around. Kind of the unsung hero in the sport. Uh, I say that because he was there when it all got started, but he made a decision, or his father made a decision, in his life, and it made a turn. But, but that's not to mention, that's not to say he's not to be recognized. Uh, he's going to be our third inductee. The name of the vehicle that he used to run was called The Beast. He's out of the St. Louis, Missouri area, ladies and gentlemen. Dan DeGrasso. Get up here, man. Got some pictures up here for you. I'll tell you something, huh? We got together, Bob and I. He actually came over to me, seen my truck, and uh, one day I was at my mom and dad's, and he come by and said, "That's a cool truck you got." From there, we kind of hit it off, you know. He said, "We do, we go four wheel, so we kind of had a, I call it an outlaw four wheel uh, gang, you know." It, that kind of started it, you know. And we, like he said, we we bust the trucks up and we'd run them hard. I like to knock trees down. Bob's like, what are you doing that for? Because I can, you know. This is fun. Anybody can run over a car. I mean, knock a tree down, right? Until I hit one too big, then I quit doing it. Stop me. Uh, I guess that's about it. I don't know what else to say. But thank you, everybody. Thank the fans. For, uh, I feel blessed, and I'm uh, humble. All right, you step over here and get your award for Jeff. Ladies and gentlemen, the third man in, right there. Give him a round of applause. Your personality shows you, you know, you're the kind of guy that you were there when it started, had a conversation with your dad about monster truck racing. Tell us what your dad said you had. Well, I had a good job, and uh, you need to just keep working, and... Uh, I don't think you should take it around. Money, the money's not there. You got to get paid, or and it's just kind of held me back. I guess I don't know. But that did not dampen your ex excitement for the sport. You know, just to even talk to you up here, your eyes light up. You all get excited and everything, and you look at this stuff and you go like, "Wow!" Well, that wow was you. 
oh yeah, it was cool. I wish I would have done something different, but you know, this this is what I chose to do, and I did it as a hobby, and uh, that's, this is what happened, you know. Now, uh, with the beast, where did the name come from? I had people call it the beast, and uh, I thought, well, that name that should stick, you know, because they'd say that that looks like a beast, man. I'd say, yeah, that's cool. We'll call it the beast. You got, you got any stories you want to tell on these, any of these guys in particular? I like the story where me and Bob ran, me and him raced a lot, me and Bob. Yeah. I mean, that's all I really ran against was, was Bob. And we, we was at Peavely in a mud run, and I backed into him. He got mad. <laughs> we was in a mud run, and we're playing in the mud. Did you get mad? We both backed in. I smashed your bed up. You didn't hurt my truck. <laughs> Bang, that was fun, that was good. Check the parking lot outside of the league. Yeah. Uh, you, you kept your reputation, you were, you were a gunslinger, there's no doubt about it. As a matter of fact, today some guys were talking and I kind of compared you to Dennis Anderson and they said, no, nah, Dennis Anderson's like you. Well, that is a compliment, right? I had no fear, but you know, young and dumb, I guess, I don't know. I've seen your vehicle run before, but never knew, had an opportunity to meet you. You're a class guy and I wish y'all the luck in the world. And, uh, and at this time, I want to enter, if you got any photographs or anything you want to take of this guy holding his trophy, this is the time to do it. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan, the three-wheel Missouri man, right there. So at, at this time, uh, this guy comes out of Minnesota. And uh, I can't say anything other than, ladies and gentlemen, going into that first year in the number four slot is Mr. Everett Jasmer out of Minnesota. The USA won. Everett. Well, thanks everybody for giving me the opportunity to be here. Uh, first of all, the traditional and meaning, I mean it every minute, every bit of it. Thanks to all the fans. None of us, not a single one of us, could have done a thing without fans. I also want to make a special thank you to the Hall of Fame group uh, for doing this. Uh, Bob Chandler, thank you. We, uh, we spent a lot of time uh, competing and also uh, trading off things in those early days. Another fellow, I'm, I know I'm not going to be able to get everybody out to try and ruin this quick here. Another fellow that helped make things uh, great, Rod Litzow. Um, in 1988, a dream of mine came true. I had been yelling and screaming and hollering with promoters and other people for many years already that we needed competition in this sport. I put Rod behind the wheel, and thank you, Rod. You won that first national championship. Um, also, I, uh, you mentioned Steve Wilkie, who took over driving after Rod, and uh, I also lost another member of the old crew, Bill Gavin, who ran with Rod in the 1988 season. In the last two years, three years, I've lost two crew members, so thank you, fellas. <laughs> I got a gift for you and a few others who have asked me about this over the years. This one's for you. Where'd the name USA, it's hot, yeah, one time. Where'd the name USA 1 come from? One day, I don't remember what year it was now, but one day I was out mowing my yard in the summertime, pushing more across the yard. And I just had a flash, just a just flash. I remembered my, uh, having been a Chevy guy forever, of course, uh, street cars and race cars and whatever. I remembered my traditional red, white, and blue stars and stripes Chevy license plate, USA 1 license plate in my den. I remember turning off the moor and running in the house and grabbing that license plate and looking at it and I said, what better name for what I hoped would be the number one Chevy in the land, I called it USA 1. Truck. Who paints your trucks for you? Rod Lipsaw did a lot of it. <laughs> Rod Lipsaw painted it blue, the, the first dark blue paint job with the 48 inch tires, and then he painted it the pearl paint job in 84, I believe it was. Dan Patterson did it, same guy that did Bob's work. Um, great, great artist. Okay. So his work is still on that truck, I've never touched it up. Uh, 
purposely. I don't, I've never redone that truck. Uh, so when you walk by the truck, you'll see Dan Patterson's work. It's still there. After. There was one incident where the truck had a throttle problem, and I've had people ask me about this today. We actually, Bobby, you explained it to us, but he was actually seen one time operating the throttle. And what were exactly were you on the truck, and how were you operating the throttle? I believe I was sitting on the hood, sitting back on by the, the windshield. Hood. I had the windshield that put one of my uh, employees behind the wheel and I ran the throttle from sitting on the hood so we could get it off the floor because the throttle link had broke. I didn't think it was that radical. No, you wouldn't, but okay. But that's Everett Jasmer, ladies and gentlemen, inducted this year in the Hall of Fame. And uh, congratulations to you. I'm proud to call you my friend, buddy. Don't come and get that. Army, you, Army, one last thing. You help make us what we are. Oh, well, thank you. It's, it's been a privilege to do that. Don't forget your hat, man. That thing starts crawling across the stage here if you don't watch it. There you go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Everett Jasper. Again, they'll all be back up your program. Well, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'm going to ask Scott to uh, say a few words on behalf of uh, Fred, and uh, we're going to turn it right over to you. It's a hot mic. Okay, you ready for this? A little ZZ time, is Thanks, Army. What an honor to, to represent Barefoot, Fred Schaefer, and even be on the same stage and have an opportunity with the, these other five guys. Uh, just, uh, that, they're the guys that got me into the sport. I kind of came along a few years later with, you know, when the, when the big surge of truck came out. And uh, a quick story, uh, Jeff Dane and I never, never really got to meet. We never did any shows together, but I, I got to know his brother pretty well. Uh, we used to go to Gravelorama back in the old days. That's where I met Bob for the first time. Um, back when Bob was on 48s, you know, I was just a kid in a street truck, and uh, you know, you know, I watched that rear steering, and he parked the truck sideways. It was just, it just, just got me from the get-go right there. But uh, just so you know, Jeff, uh, your brother Steve let me drive the old King Kong truck, and we were there a couple days early before the event started. And I was just mesmerized and got to know him and hung out for four or five days and uh, got to take a little pass around the parking lot. So. You're probably the reason I had a monster truck. I knew it. <laughs> Thank you. I really, I really appreciate that. And Fred had hired some drivers, but uh, the things just weren't really working out for him. So you guys kind of came up with a new idea. You want to tell us, because you were pioneering this. I, I'd been telling him that I was in the market for a, for a, for a big motor. And uh, he, uh, he said, hey, he goes, I got an old motor in the back. Got an old motor in the back. and." Uh, I'll just make you a deal on you make payments to me. Well, I'd went and uh, a few months went by and I, I beat him at an event and uh, made him mad. And, uh, and he, he called me and he said, need you come down and uh, need you come down, come down here and visit me. So I went down and he said, you know that truck, that motor that I sold you? Yeah. He said, I took that out of my truck. That was my, that was one of my, my best motors. And he you said, want it back? No, he didn't want it back. <laughs> he just wanted to see if I could handle the horsepower because he said, I got a proposition for you. He said. I'm tired of these drivers tearing my trucks up. They're partying in my haul rigs. They're, they're, they're not taking care of the truck. They're not representing the barefoot name. He said, I want to try something new. He said, I want you to, to, to put barefoot on your truck, run the name. I'll help you, I'll help you promote it. And uh, you know, I just hit a couple magazine covers, and I'm thinking, this is crazy. Why, why would I you know, finally get where I want to be? And you know, the promoters are calling now. Why would I change my name now? But I went ahead and made a decision, and I'll tell you, it was. It was an honor. It was an honor to run barefoot, and, and uh, uh, I think I don't think Fred could have picked anybody better to for, to receive this award for him. So on behalf of the folks here, and Fred, Scott, I want to thank you for coming up here and getting this award, bud. You did good. All right. Thank you very much, Army. Thank you, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, now the Show Me State. They call him Jumpin' Jack Flash. How about it? Right here. Well, we want to thank you all. This is surely a great honor. You know, we started out exhibition stuff, which we tried to progress it up on the exhibition. Um, you know, the magazine companies and all the ones would kind of throw hints and things out there, like this bus crush deal. Well, you know, I get to do is put the idea in my head. I'm, I'm ready to go. He had no idea I was going to go home and try to do it. 
but I did do it. This is uh, such an honor to be with all these guys. You know, we got all these guys to push, you know, like Jeff Dane and I. Broadway. Jeff would hook on with his big old diesel onto the back of us and just drag us all over the place. And then we'd go out on the drag strip. Jeff's old diesel wouldn't keep up with that gas motor. <laughs> so it was come and go, but you know, the monster trucks has done so much as far as my life goes that I would have never got to do. And thank you all. How was that as a father to see your boy come up knowing that you, you'd already made your name, people knew who you were. And here comes your kid up. How, how did you feel about that? You know, what, what we're trying to do is uh, make a family thing out of this. Which, you know, I had Jackie, my son, which he was eager beaver. He was all out every time. I tried to get him. Sometimes you got to back off, bring the money home, boy, and, and let's uh, take it a little further. But it was just the other way around. He, he had to go full, full out all the time. The, but the, the number one thing that people always said was they felt that the 10,000 number was too, well, you couldn't build a safe truck for that. But I think you kind of proved that you could, didn't you? Well, I, I did, without a doubt, I did. You know, my truck weighed 7,900 pounds when they started adding all the weight on to me. You know, and, and of course, my truck at 7,900 pounds, I ran a 468 cubic inch big block Chevrolet in it, iron block, nothing special, 671 Hillborn with a 671 blower. And I'm running guys like Fred with 572s and Bob with the big motors, you know, and my truck was doing real good. It's about time now for me to uh, officially uh, welcome this man to the very first uh, class of Hall of Fame inductees, ladies and gentlemen. How about a round of applause for Mr. Jack Wellman? He's in. Last man standing, Jack. I mean, you were supposed to ask how to come up with a boy's name. Okay, he wanted me to ask him how he came up with the tourist name. Well, you know, um, we got the Bigfoots and the Barefoots and the Grave Diggers and everything, and my wife is the one to come up with this name. Right. <laughs> and, and of course, that's, that's my Zodiac. That's a bull. All we did is put wheels on it. Yeah. Right. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, next week you do not have to turn on America's Most Wanted. You get a chance to look at them right here, right now. Okay, ready? Okay, when I count to three, we're getting ready to take pictures. Ready? One, ever check your zipper. Two, three. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, the first class right there. That's super. You guys looking good. I'm proud of you. Big smile. Did everybody have a good time tonight? All right. Well, get on the Internet and contact a local newspaper and tell them what a great deal it was. We appreciate their hospitality, everything about this fine town. And we look forward to coming back. We're called monster truck people, right, guys?